Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Word. In this module, I want to have a quick look at how to set tabs. So first of all, to get into tabs, go to the Home tab, and then where it says Paragraph here, this small arrow to the right, if you go in there, down the bottom left is Tabs. So it's quite well hidden. So this is a formal way of setting tabs. There are quicker ways of doing this, but I just wanted to show you this one. So if you set a tab stop at five centimeters and set, and then 10 centimeters and set, these tab stops will appear on this ruler and will override the default tab stop of 1.27 centimeters. At the moment, they're left aligned, but you can change the alignment to any of these. And at the moment, they don't have leader dots because this is going to be the title. So once you've set each one, you can click OK and you'll see them appear on the ruler. So then you can use them to navigate across the page rather than pressing multiple tabs. So if I press tab once, it goes to the first tab stop and then I type what I want to be there. I press tab again, it goes to the second one. I type what I want to appear there. Then I'm going to press enter. Now what I want for the rest of this list is for the names of people to have lead, what are called leader dots. So to do that, I need to go back into the tabs area and I need to click on five, which it is, and leader dot set. I want that one too. And I need to do the same for the 10 to set. So for each tab, you need to click on it and do set. And then you click OK, and then you can start typing. When you press tab, you get the leader dots. And you press tab again, you get the leader dots. Just press enter twice and just type one other person, John, tab. So tabs are very useful for lining things up like this. But what you have to remember is if you do not remove these tabs, and you can just actually pull these off, which I'll show you shortly. If you do not remove these tabs, every time you press tab going through this document, it will jump to that five centimeter mark instead of what you're expecting of 1.27 centimeters. So you need to go back into tabs and clear all from this point. Okay, so now they're no longer on the ruler and you, um, you can't see them. But if you click back up even one line, they appear again. So if you started pressing enter, you are now bringing them down these extra lines. So they're off there, but they're on there and they're on there. So just be careful that you don't um, bring these extra tabs down. So I'm just gonna pull them off that extra line that I created there. So now they're just on that line, which is okay, I'm okay with that. So the next line down, there's no tabs. So that is a formal way of putting tabs on, if you like. A quick way of putting tabs on is to Use this tool in the left hand corner where you can see where I'm pointing now where it says left tab. You don't actually drag that or click on that. If you click on it, it just changes it to a new tab, a different tab, which I'll do in a second. But basically what you do here is you just put your mouse onto the point of the ruler where the ruler is. And by the way, if you haven't got the ruler, it's on the view tab and then ruler. So you just click there and then you get the little L shaped tab so when you press tab it jumps to that point and then I will put my name so you can see how it works so that's coming into the document that way and I'll press return I'm going to pull that one off just pull it down into the page and let go now when you click this button here in the corner that's going to change over to what's called a center tab I'll put that on the same point and tab to it and type my name again and then you can see that it's coming out either side of that tab so if I click on that tab that's the center point so if I go to this line and click on the, the tab it's coming from that point going into the document from the left so if I press um, return again on this line pull that tab off and click this one again you'll get a right tab and if I click on the same point three centimeters press tab to it, type my name again. You can see this is going the other way into the left margin. So normally you would have one of these right tabs over on the right hand side. And if I just quickly double click into the header, 
when you get into the header you can see there is actually a right tab preset there it's already there and there's a center tab there already set when you double click into the header just come out of that header press enter come down pull that one off click the next one the next one is the decimal tab which is a great tool to use to line money up so if i click that on at the 12 centimeter mark and press tab and then go one two three like that so entering money when i press enter i tab again i go 1.23 press enter and tab again i go 12.23 what it's doing is lining up on the decimal point so you if you click and hold you can see it's lining up on the decimal point there's no way that you're going to get money um, lined up by just pressing the space bar i mean pressing the space bar to come across is the worst thing you can do not only is it difficult to line things up but if i put the show hide on for a second you're basically putting all these little character spaces in your document so that is like almost like a line of text so it's a very poor way to set a document up but unfortunately when people don't know about tabs that's what they do but so space bar get rid of it don't do it just backspace that off and then i want to come down the line and then just pull that one off so there's no tabs i've cleared all the tabs now if you have a table so i'm just going to create a table insert table um just get it three three columns when you click into a table cell you can see that you've got like a little mini document there a little ruler with your indent left indent marker there and your right indent marker there now if i put a tab so at the minute i've got a decimal tab so let's suge let's suggest that we're going to use um, a decimal tab on each of these so i need to click into the cell to activate it so i've got a decimal tab now how this works so normally if i um type that's lining that one up if i press enter Now, if I press tab, it jumps into the next one and you can see it's lining it straight away. If you've got an older version of Word, sometimes it doesn't actually go like this is doing. So this is the most up-to-date version of Word. It's going straight to the tab because I've set tabs. It doesn't do that. What you have to do is hold your shift key down and press tab and then it will jump to it because... In an older version of Word, it would just sit in the left left corner. When you press tab, it would just jump into the next table. Press tab again, it would jump to the next table. It would never go to the, the tab stop that you've set. So you will have to hold your shift key down while you press tab. And then it will jump across. So let me just get rid of this table. Just going to cut that out of the way. It's out of the way. And then if you highlight all of these and go back up to paragraph clear tabs it'll get rid of all the tabs and everything will just bang into in bang into itself like so so i put show hide on you'll better see if there's any tabs manually placed there's one there and these are all tabbed in ones so that's what this show hide will show you where the tab markers are I'm not going to change all that, but you can see the impact without tabs. You can't just pull tabs off or clear tabs in a document without having potentially catastrophic consequences. One last thing I want to mention is not using tabs to move address blocks over to the right hand side. What I mean by that is if I, let me just pull that tab off there. If I press the tab key and get myself over like so and then I want to do an address when I press enter I've got a tab all the way across again this is in my view not the way to do letters apart from the typo there but it's a very long-winded way of doing an address because every time I press return it shoots back across to the left hand side and I've got a tab all the way across now, of course, I could set a tab over there. I could set a tab there and just tab it once. Um, but the point is, I'll try and show you what I mean. This is going to go wrong when I um, 
when I try to add something to it. Now, that looks okay at the minute, but if you suddenly decide that you need to ad add additional information on this particular line, so I'm just going to type some random letters, see what happens. It shoots back over here, which is obviously not what you want to do. Now, and the way I did that, you've got loads of tabs everywhere. Probably a bit over the top, you probably would just set a tab there. But this isn't how you should set your letters um, out anyhow, using tabs. These are old-fashioned ways of doing it. Older people tend to use tabs because of typewriters. They maybe have learnt, learnt on a typewriter as opposed to a computer or a, even an electronic typewriter. So don't go down that route. As I've said on other sessions, you should use your indent. So if you just grab the indent marker, pull that over to wherever you want it. So let's go for a... Because when you type, now, when I press enter, it stays there. It stays on the indent. So I don't have to start tabbing back across. And if I insert anything into this, it will not send it all over the page. So if I do exactly the same thing now, watch what happens. It will just wrap round in the same area on the indent because that's where the indent. So basically you've moved the left margin to there for this part of the document. And then when you go down a little bit, press enter there, you would just take this indent marker off. So control Q is the key command for that. Or you can drag it back across wherever you want. And then you type in dear sir, madam, or wherever your address block is, type your letter, do your signature, and then um, everything's okay. So tabs have got a use, but they're definitely not to be used, I don't think, to uh, scatter across the page like that, because it will cause difficulties when you start editing or adding extra text maybe later on. So that is the end of this little session, so I'll see you on the next one.